Hi, I am in the park on my bicycle and I am on my way to uh, my brother's house actually uh, because I am going to visit my nephew. Uh, Milo is 11 years old, he's almost 12 and he is a sketcher and he loves drawing, sketching, anything really. So, uh, and that's just fantastic to share that love with him for the course called Stretching in Sketchbook School where um, Lapin asks us to draw a um, big head portrait. Uh, I thought I could just visit my nephew for that, ask him if he can be my model and um, maybe he can draw me if he feels like it. So uh, I'll be uh, going to visit him and have some fun drawing a big head portrait, Lapin style. Hoi, ik ben Milo. Ik ben 11 jaar oud en ik ben de neef van Koosje. Wat ik heel leuk vind is dat wij samen een liefde delen en dat is tekenen. En uh, je bent er hartstikke goed in en je doet het heel veel. Wil je wat laten zien van wat je hebt gemaakt? Vind je het leuk, lettering? Ja. Je doet nog steeds heel veel huiswerk ervoor. Ja. Ik ga jou tekenen. Vind je het heel erg als het niet lijkt? Nee hoor. <laughs> Mag helemaal niet lijken. Oh, wat fijn. Je bent een ideaal model. Dank je wel. Oké, okay, daar gaan we dan. I feel kind of nervous because I am so unfamiliar with this style of drawing. It's kind of like a caricature drawing, but more realistic, I guess. More of a comic style, maybe. Anyway, of course, my inner critic is screaming and shouting and objecting and making me anxious that I am going to mess this sketchbook page up. That alone, this video that everyone in the sketchbook school community is going to see. Oh well, deep breathing, and here we go. A drawing that doesn't turn out great is still better than no drawing at all. And why am I even worrying about all that even before I put the very first line on the page? Lapin starts with the eyes and so will I. It's kind of hard to estimate where to start so everything will fit in, but then again, if it doesn't fit, distorting the image is kind of the point in Lapin's kind of fisheye view style. This is such a nice way to spend a little bit of time together. I noticed the beautiful almond shape of Milo's eyes. And while I am studying his face, we chat a little. I think I'm doing fine on those eyes. So we're off to a good start. The nostrils are quite accurate, but then those lines that I am adding are awful. Oh well, they're there now. And this, oh no, Milo's face is rounder than this. I guess I was trying to draw the chin. Oh well. We both agree that one of the hardest parts of drawing portraits is to draw someone's age. I feel like I'm drawing a portrait of a future Milo, say 10 years from now? With a very broad neck, yikes. I have just less than half of the page left to fit the body in. By now I've started sweating and I'm almost panicking, but Milo is encouraging me, which is really great. We talk about the position he sits in and I discover that there is this particular position of the hands that he and his parents refer to as the Kuna hands. 
The way he puts his hands flat on top of each other is exactly how his dad does that, and his granddad too. Must be something in the male line of the Kuhne family because I don't do this, I rather fold my hands. I wish I would have drawn that neck a little thinner to have a bit smoother or maybe logical transition from head to the distorted body, which I need to make really compact to fit in the page. Well, coulda woulda shoulda. It's all part of the learning curve. I've never done a portrait like this before. We just giggle about how the portrait unfolds and I cheat a little by drawing his feet in a slightly different position so they fit on the page. I hope the color can help me fix a little. It can add a bit of depth and with that show some of the rounder shapes like the cheeks. In the meantime, we keep giggling about how this doesn't look like Milo. He says, but you're so good at drawing, how come you find this so hard? So we discuss this, how a certain pressure, like being filmed, can influence the drawing. And also, I may be good at drawing, but I'm not so good at this particular technique. Milo thinks about that and then he says that he can't really draw animals that well either. But we both agree that if we would fill a whole sketchbook just doing that, drawing animals or doing portraits like this, we would in the end know how to solve certain problems and feel a lot less insecure about it than now. And the drawings would get better and better. And even though now I feel a little insecure about what I'm doing, we both really enjoy this time together. While I color the page, Milo tells me about his first couple of weeks in high school and about all the homework he has to do for history class, Dutch lessons, English, French, maths. But the last one is actually kind of fun because he has to do drawing for that. I'm so happy that even with so much work for school, he makes time to do a creative lettering exercise each day. He'll sit down together with his parents right after dinner and they all take out their workbooks and dump a whole pile of pens onto the table to pick from and play with. I'm kind of disappointed that the portrait doesn't show a lot of resemblance, but when we take a closer look, the eyes and the eyebrows are quite accurate and the position he's sitting in as well. I try to analyze what it is exactly why this does look like someone's nephew, but not particularly mine. And I think it's mostly the shape of the face that should have been rounder. Of course, I need to add a text balloon, like Lapin does. I like that I discovered the Kuna hands, so I write Milo's sentence, Dit zijn de Kuna handjes, which means these are the Kuna hands. Oké, okay. ik vind het niet lijken, maar ik vind het wel een leuke tekening. Wat vind jij? Ik vind het wel leuk. Ja? Schrijf je naam er maar bij. Zo groot of zo klein als je wil. Mm, ja, nee, het lijkt niet. Maar het is wel leuk. Dankjewel. Geen dank.